Hey everyone, John with AJ Outdoors again, and today we're doing some boat maintenance and repair type stuff. So we got the Motor Guide XI5 trolling motor. Had it for four years now, and it's been great. It's changed how I fish. It's the one with the GPS with the remote control. You can anchor lock and sit in one spot and stay having to throw an anchor out like over a brush pile or something. You can troll with it and stay on a certain route based on the GPS. Okay. So last fishing trip out, the GPS wasn't working. Did some. Uh, course the warranty's out it's a two-year warranty it's a four-year-old motor so I called the uh, motor guide folks talked with their techs and we boiled it down to the GPS module being out so um, GPS module is not cheap it's over $300 for the part and then if I were to take it to a boat shop well there's another two to three hundred dollars in labor plus the fact that my boat's gonna be out of commission for several weeks while it sits at the boat shop and with what's going on right now with uh, non-essential businesses being closed, who knows when I would get this thing fixed if I was gonna pay somebody. So I'm gonna do it myself. I also, I'll show you in a minute, I also was looking at the, they call it the curly cord. That's kind of the power cord from the base unit up to the head of the trolling motor. And it is, uh, it is broken down. It's starting to see, you can see inside it. It started to get like rot, I guess. So. We're gonna go ahead and replace that while we're at it. So I spent about 450 bucks on parts. Again, if I was gonna take this to a shop, add another two to three hundred dollars to that price. That's the, the expense that I'm trying to avoid doing this myself. If you haven't seen it, I installed the quick disconnect. We're gonna utilize that today because um, it'll be easier to film this if I can take the troll motor off the boat, put it on a tabletop and work on it there. So that's what we're gonna do. All right, so we got it off the boat, got it on the table. I'm going to show you what we're going to do here. <clears throat> Alright, so the primary reason we're doing this thing is the bad GPS module. So you can see, this is it here. So part of it mounts up in the head of the unit, right up here. The other end mounts down in the base of the unit. And you got the stretchy cord, of course. And you can see the uh, attachments there. Okay, so again, GPS wasn't working. Talked to their techs and we narrowed it down to need to replace this bad boy. Now. The other thing we're going to replace today is known as the curly cord. Okay, I'll take it out of here. So when I was looking at all this stuff and trying to figure out what I need to do, I realized this cable, right, the curly cord, curly cable, whatever you want to call it, that also attaches from the base to the head, basically carrying the power, just two wires, right, it was all frayed and chapped up and coming apart. And so I was like, well, I'm going to tear into it for one thing. I might as well tear it into it for both. So yeah, one of the things I was disappointed with is these attachments. They're just crimped on. There's no protection to them at all. So if I have enough wire, I'll cut them off and put on some new ones that use some shrink wrap. If I don't have enough wire, then I'll use that liquid glue that I or liquid tape that I used on the on the power system that post up over here somewhere probably. Um, and then you guys can go or over there. I don't know. You guys can see how that works. But if we have to use it, we'll use it. Everybody's outside today, so there's gonna be some noise. All right. Let's take a look at that power cable and I'll show you why I'm replacing it. All right, so you can see a little bit of it right there. You see how that's frayed up, chaffed up? I don't know, I think it's just from the sun and being used, because it really doesn't ever rub against anything other than on the, the post, you know, when it's put away, but you can look at that. There's cracks in there, and there's, these aren't even the worst spots. The worst spots are on the other side of it. But needless to say, there you can see some pretty bad spots right there. Needless to say, I didn't need all that, so we're going to have to replace all of that. All right, we're starting at the base here. Um, you can see I already got one side removed. The way that quick disconnect mount works, I have to remove this to get the lock off. So that was easy. So looking at this, I can already tell this is the end that goes into the head of the unit because there it is. It's got this square block on it, just like that square block. So I know this goes in there, right? This is what's going to come up to the top end. All right. Way like that. 
Okay. You can see the GPS module sitting right here. And this power cord sitting here. It looks like I need to remove this more. Just gotta figure out what actually comes off of this now to get it out the rest of the way. It looks like I'm gonna need to disconnect this guy. Something to put these pieces parts in. Always keep spare containers like that laying around. There's two little bitty screws. Okay. That other piece we threw over here. I'm gonna need my glasses to put that back on so I'm not gonna mess with that. Alright, so there goes face piece. That we'll throw that in there too. Now let's see what we got. Definitely doesn't need to come. There's nothing else to unhook other than the GPS module, which is right here. It's hard to get at. Come on, baby. Come on, baby. Let's do the unhook. We'll have to get something to get in. All right, some pliers. You gotta be gentle though, you don't wanna tweak this piece of plastic. We got it right there. All right, that's disconnected. Taking the module out. What is holding this guy from coming? This guy. They do. They do have a lot of dialectic grease on those connections, so that's a good. Thing. Yeah. Anytime you're taking stuff apart, back in the day, I used to have mark everything. Every little wire. You know, replacing a motor in a vehicle or something, you gotta disconnect everything. But nowadays, that little camera on your cell phone makes it real easy. Uh, messy, messy, mess. But at least you can see they did use dialectic grease on it to protect it from corrosion, so that's good. One more right there. And I'll go from there and see what else we gotta get. Ooh, that one's gonna be hard to get to. You can need to take them. It's tight. Oh, careful, John. Slow and easy, brother. All right. All right. Don't start losing pieces, Paul. as we need to go folks don't need to take it all the way off you can see let's get the other camera going here all right so you can see where we're at now we got one of the wires unhooked the other one needs to be unhooked and that end of the curly will be unhooked and that end of the uh, GPS module is already unhooked okay so next we'll move over here and work on this end Let's do it. All right, so we're moving to the head of the unit. There's five screws I gotta take off the back side. There you go. Okay. 
Okay. That's what the insides look like. So we'll uh, see they got nut locks for the power cord, right? Black to white, red to red, that's easy. And then just a couple screws holding the top in. Okay. So let's go ahead and get that power cord out of there. We see how it was mounted. This has a little spot for it to sit in, and then this guy sits right over the top of it. Okay. That's how it comes in in here. And then the wires go this direction. We gotta make sure everything fits back together. We don't wanna pinch anything when we put it back together. This should be the easy part. Oh, they're crimped. Huh, okay. That's different. I don't know if I can just uncrimp them or if I'm gonna have to cut them. Either way it'll work. Let's see if we can just widen them out a little bit. No, that ain't gonna work. So what we don't have is any more of these, but I think I've got a better way to do that, so I'm not gonna worry about it. Alright, and that'll give us our black to white we'll still remember because it'll be sitting right there. Red to red. There you go. That dude is done. What we'll do is we'll replace both ends up here. One of the things you have to do when you're done is what I'm doing right now in reverse. You're going to have to re-twist these guys together. They do have a manual motor guide for folks like there's control motors like this that you can install that GPS module after the fact. They sell it as a kit to do that way. And so the instructions to do that pretty much are the instructions you need uh, to do it to replace the one too. So there are some written instructions, just not good video. All right, so something else I wanted to show you. If you remember on the new cable, I showed you those ends that I was concerned about they weren't sealed up in any way so they could corrode if you look closely at these there is corrosion on the ends there and since the wires exposed there right this one's got some of the dielectric grease on it but there's still some corrosion right and there's corrosion on that side too i hope you guys can see that and if not take my word for it so um the lengthwise, I don't think I'm going to be able to cut those new ones down shorter. I don't want to risk having it too short and be in a tight spot. So I am going to definitely coat those with the uh, liquid tape just to make sure we're safe. All right, folks. Well, first part of this thing is started. We got the power cord off. We'll set this sucker aside. We will install the new power cord at the head side. And then we'll attack the uh, the module, GPS module at the head side. So at the head of the unit, I'm going to be attaching those wires for the power cord with these bad boys. Okay. So this is that heat shrink material. I've been saying heat tape or shrink tape or whatever, right? Heat shrink. Okay. And then the middle, that's actually a low temperature solder. So when you put this on there and you heat it, you not only melt this to it. But that solder melts onto the wires and you got a good solder and it's going to be sealed so no corrosion gets in there so that's what you're going to see me use attaching those wires on the curly cable to the head unit all right as you can see we've got one on both wires are in we got white to the black you need to kind of hold them together a little bit just like that right and then we're going to use a heat gun you can use i mean i know people use lighters and stuff this guy, if you want a good heating gun that will help remove decals from stuff, and we'll definitely do this kind of work, this is what you need. Um, I'll put a link to this guy down there and below too. It's going to take it a second to get hot and make some noise. Doesn't take long to get hot. Though. So 
So that's my first time using that bad boy. We're gonna let it cool and see how well it's holding. We can always go back and add more heat to it if we need to. So let's let that one sit for a minute. to get the uh, module out of this end of it but it's pretty simple two screws and that one was actually pretty loose and keep these screws because we're going to use them again I'm sure the old so it goes up in here it's got a little pocket to hold it pocket to hold it comes out it does not look the same as the old as the new one we'll show you that right now so at the top end the old one when you look at it and the wires run right into it the new one shaped a little differently has the two screw spots it says up so you know that's up Duh. but look what's different it connects completely differently this one can actually disconnect and reconnect so maybe in the future you can just replace this piece you know or something I don't know but I kind of like that better but I think because of that it's not going to be able to run yeah it definitely will not run up over here like the old one did we'll bring it over here here but for right it's got to go straight that other one tried to come this way but that'll be different all right <clears throat> so this guy comes in now if you look in the manual for installing the thing because it has that other wire like i just mentioned the cable that says to come up this way and not to have it come this way which remember up up right not to have it come straight back but with this new design you have to have it come straight back okay so we're going to come under this go right here we're going to get our screws and we're ready to put this guy back together at the top end Now what we do have to be careful with is this guy already has a spot to sit in, right? And then this guy comes in like this, right? To hold him in place. He's got a spot to sit in. And there's a little, see the groove on the bottom? So now we know how he goes in. So this guy's got to sit in that groove in his little spot. And that's how it's gonna be mounted like that okay but all this wiring has got to be folded up in here in a way that it doesn't get damaged by any of these screws or these screws right that's where we got to be careful this guy's got to come across like this he goes inside his little pocket like that That's basically how we want it to look. Let's get that top back on. Now this guy again has to match up on that and line up. Got one screw I know is still in here, right here. So 
sometimes when you're doing this stuff, it would be easier to have two hands. Alright, that's it for the top end. So now we're going to wrap them together, install the power, and then install, install the module. But before I install that power cable, remember I showed you those ends that I wanted to put some liquid tape on? We're going to do that. It's going to take a couple coats. So we're going to have to, that's going to take a few minutes. Put a coat on, let it dry for a little while. Put a coat on, let it dry for a little while. Until I'm satisfied that it's sealed up enough that it's not going to corrode like that again. So you can see we've done kind of the reverse now of what we how we took it apart now we're going to reverse that process so i've got the i shortened it up so this isn't pulling too hard i place it back in here where it mounts i'm going to attach these cables and these cables next okay so the first one was that well the last one i undid was that ground anymore we're gonna make sure everything fits. I'm gonna place this guy back on. This comes back up inside of it. Alright. This guy will too. It'll go like that. those two hooked up in there. Now we're going to hook up the last one on here. Get that guy a good coating of that grease both on the bottom and top. Want that grease everywhere. Those ones here. Okay. Next thing we got to do is install the lower module of the GPS module. But to do that, it's got to be twisted through this cable, through the curly cable. And so they recommend you extend the motor as far as you can so it's stretched out. So we're going to pull this thing down further, stretch it out some, wrap that sucker through there, and then we'll come back and we'll uh, hit this end. Now 
where'd this end? So this end, this guy's gonna go in here, and all three of these guys are gonna bend this way. So he can lay up right in there, not all three. This guy's on the spot right there, okay? So that's how that's gonna sit. So I need to reconnect this one to here and rerun this one. Remember the route it came out over here, went through there and then down and hung out down here. And this is what I attached to my uh, Jeep, or to my Lorenz. So let's start connecting guys together here. So get these two attached first. There we go. Go get it, go get it, come on. Come on, baby. There we go. Alright, so that one's attached. Okay. These guys come out of the way. This guy comes to there. To there. To there. And I have to keep up. Where's that flathead screwdriver at? Careful not to damage your core, but he's got a little spot he's got to pinch up into here. Right there. There. And then you got to just come through here. Down to there. Down to there. And out to there. That guy's run. So now i got to start getting some of these guys back where they go, okay? Let's do that now. This guy. We all know he goes up front. He's going to sit up here. Oh, where's his spot at? Like so. This guy, of course, is going to attach to the cover, right? He attaches to the back of this with those two short screws, remember? This guy is basically a holder. This guy. This guy's gonna come through here. Stick in there. Okay. Alright, so we've got everybody hooked up in there. Last thing we gotta replace is this cover. And this is the little circuit panel that does the lights right on here. And I already know the battery one's bad. When I took it apart the last time. There was some corrosion on it, so I need to replace it. Well, you have to do it. This whole piece comes with this attached to it. So in the future, I'm gonna have to replace that. That's That's pretty good. The sides, these actually hold it together, so. We'll put one on, get everybody in place, and then put one on. All right, well, all right, folks, so that's all we can do on the bench. <clears throat> We'll mount her up on the boat and then there's a process so it has a remote control for to control the troll motor there's no pedal or nothing um and now that since the gps module is new we have to link that remote control to the gps module that's a process of putting pushing a few buttons on it while they're both on it'll link and then you have to uh you have to orientate the gps right so that you have to drive the boat in three circles with the troll motor deployed, listen for it, hold, pushing certain buttons again. It'll make a certain sound, and dee 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 dee, you're set. Then you have to align the troll motor to the kill of the boat, where you get it lined up, where you think it's perfectly straight, even with the kill, because it's off centered, right? And then you push some certain buttons, and it'll lock that in. Once you've done those three things, it should be good to go. Um, we're not going to put it on the water to do the loops, the circles. We can do that actually on the trailer. We'll take it to a parking lot nearby, drive it around in circles. Um, before we do all that, I'll go into greater detail on what buttons you push and all that. 
I told you I'd come back and explain the uh, controls on the remote and how to link it. So that's the remote, okay? When you first deploy the motor with power on, right, and it powers up, within 10 seconds you need to press and hold the two left and right arrow keys. Just push them and hold them both. It'll emit uh, some beeps that'll let you know that it's linked, okay? Next thing you want to do is, it's called the angle calibration, but what you're doing is lining that troll motor up with the kill of your boat. So when you set it on a path, it doesn't go off to one side or the other because it's not lined up with your boat kill. So just use, deploy it, right? Have it on, use the left and right, and turn it until you got it lined up with your kill, right? You can stand in front and look at it, stand above and look at whatever works best for you. I like to look at it from the front of the boat. Um, and once you have that set, okay, you hold the manual button, which is the one with the M on it. If you guys already have this, you know what I'm talking about, right? Hold down the manual button, press and release one, press and release one, press and release two. Okay? So manual button, one, one, two. Boom. Your kill is set, your alignment, right? Your mounting angle. Now, to calibrate the compass, that's the next thing you need to do. That's where you need to go in a circle, either on the water with the trolling motor deployed, not running right have it deployed and on but using the big motor and just drive in two circles right or you're going to drive on the trailer you deploy it still of course it's not running and then someone drives the vehicle around you know with the trailer in two circles you're on the boat with the trolling motor so you can tell what's going on but for that before you start your circles you're going to hold the the manual button again and press and release one 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 so m one 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 it'll emit a sound you start your circles and then just before you finish the second circle is going to do two or three beeps right and that's let you know that it's calibrated okay so those are the three things sometimes when you're using this motor and if you travel a long distance they tell you you need to recalibrate it too okay so there you go folks that is it do me a favor i know this is a long video those of you that are still here i appreciate it hit that subscribe button we got a lot more coming your way uh you'll enjoy it also if you want to give me a thumbs up i appreciate it if you got any questions i know some of the video it's hard to see what i'm doing on the base so if you're doing this you're in the middle of it or you're about to do it and you got any questions Hit me a, a message down below, a comment, and I'll answer all comments. Or, you know, down there you've got access to my Facebook page, Twitter, Instagram, you know, whichever one you're comfortable with. Find me and shoot me some questions. I'm more than happy to help you out with it, okay? Not come and do it for you, but I'll give you advice uh, over the airways, all right? Okay, folks, that's it for this one. Uh, peace out.